Hello, in this video I'm going to discuss Jebba Spike, a Python graphical user interface that I developed in order to optimize my time spike sorting in vivo electrophysiology data acquired from Exona's DAC USB. Now, Jebba Spike will by no means be a replacement for Tint. It is simply a minimalistic spike sorting package that I created and it was inspired by offline sorter. Now before I continue I will list the requirements for what you need in order to be using Jebaspike. First requirement is that the data must be recorded using Exona's DAC USB. Either that or it must be converted to the tint file format from whatever format is native to your recording. The second requirement is that this is a Python graphical user interface, so you must have Python installed. If you do not have it installed, I suggest the latest version. However, keep in mind that I developed this package using Python 3.7.0. The third requirement is simply to say that there is no operating system requirement, at least not one that the Python code dictates as I use all cross-platform packages. However, Tint does require that you use Windows. Keep in mind that I used Windows 10 when developing this package. Now before I dive into Jebaspike, let's just go over a brief Tint example just so you can see the differences. So let's just start by browsing some data that we want to visualize, load it. We're going to do Tetroad 1. Now I already analyzed this data, so let's just go Let's switch from the cut file to the blue file, which will represent the initial guesses performed by cluster quick. Let's do redo exact cut. Now in this example, let's just focus on this pink color, which will be cell number 17. I selected it so we can visualize here. The goal will be to remove these spikes from this data. Now, how you do this in Tint is essentially you would go and by click on this feature space, we would create a boundary of uh, good and bad cells or spikes within the cell. Uh, in this case our cluster B will be 17 and we're gonna remove all the invalid spikes to cluster number 25 which haven't hasn't been created yet. Now we'll remove anything outside these boundaries and by selecting the middle wheel we'll create this new invalid cell number 25. Okay by going back to 17 we see these these likes are still here, so yeah, you just keep repeating this process, invalidating these cells. Okay, these spikes are still here, so what people do is they use this uh, voltage over time. Select here, so clusters. I'll enlarge this. Clear screen. Okay. Validate some more. Confirm. Okay, so some of these spikes were actually invalidated this time. And we'll just keep repeating this process over and over again. Okay, so we've, we've gone over this enough. You just see that you just repeatedly select your boundaries and remove those, invalidate those, those appropriate spikes. And sometimes you don't exactly get the spikes that you, you want to remove. And you just have to keep repeating the process and, and figuring it out and it's just trial and error sort of thing. So sort of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is, and it's a pretty decent way to to, to um clean the cells. Okay, so let's move to Jebba Spike. So I created this virtual environment here. We can just do a clean install. So we're gonna to install it is a IPI package, so you can use pip to install it. So do python minus m pip install. Jebba Spike, and then Spike is with a capital S. Press Enter. You download all the dependencies. Now all the dependencies have been installed, we can launch it by doing python minus m jebba spike, same spelling with the capital S, and enter. Now you've reached the main window of jebba spike. So to begin, you will select a session to analyze by pressing the choose file name button located in the top left. I'm going to choose a different session than what we analyze in Tint, mainly just because it's a, a simpler data set. So I'm going to choose this one. 
Now the Tetro drop-down menu should be populated with your available Tetros. If you're missing one, it's likely because you don't have a cut file for it yet, so just keep that in mind. Uh, notice that when you do change your selection for the Tetro drop-down drop -down menu, it does change your cut file name value appropriately. So anything that is within this cut file name field is what is going to be loaded when you press this plot button down here. So if you do have an alternate way of naming your files, ensure that you have the correct naming conventions in this field. Okay, so we're going to go to Tetrode 1, and we're going to begin visualizing in Java, Spi in Java Spike by pressing the plot button here in the lower left. Now you will see that there are two main graphs. There's the left, which is the three-dimensional feature space that is, uh, in this case, plotting the principal component 1, 2, and 3 on the x, y, and z axis. You can change that by selecting these different options in the drop-down menus. And you can also make it two-dimensional by choosing none for one of the options. This window does not have much functionality yet. Uh, I initially made this so that the end users can draw boundaries and uh, that you could create a unit with this three-dimensional graph. However, similar things can be done in Tint, so I just decided to skip that functionality, perform it in Tint, and then load it here later. Also note that when you're cleaning up the cells, the changes do not get reflected in this left graph. Uh, I haven't found the need to add that functionality. However, it should be a quick solve, so if you do find that you this would be useful for you, feel free to let me know. Your main focus will be on the graphs on the right, which will contain the spike waveforms that have been identified in Tint. Let me just get a larger view by maximizing real quick. This is also going to be the, the graph where you're going to be making your cuts. So, so if we wanted to remove this stray spike here visualized in cell 4, we simply create a line segment by clicking and dragging with our mouse. If we don't like the line segment that we drew, we can simply create another one by doing the same process of clicking and dragging. Or you can simply drag the handles located at the terminals of the line segment to move the one that you've already drawn. So any intersecting spikes with this line segment, in this case on cell 4, will be considered invalid. So once we've made our decision that this is the appropriate line segment we want to draw, we can confirm our decision by pressing the middle mouse button. Intent, you're given the ability to determine where the invalid spikes go. In this case, we have the same by changing this move to cell field. So right now it's defaulting to the zero cell, which is Tint's dummy cell. Right now I want to remove this spike from cell four to cell seven, just so you can visualize it. So we've confirmed our spike, so let's just press the middle mouse button to make this cut. Now you see that the spike has been removed from cell 4 and placed into this new cell 7 unit. Now you may have noticed that an additional text field has been added to the subplot label, indicating that 0.02% of the spikes have been removed from cell 4. This is for if you have a protocol that dictates that maybe you don't want to remove more than 5% of the original spike values, uh, you can keep track of how many spikes you have removed here. Now if you decided that you've made a mistake when removing this spike, you can simply press the undo button located in this towards the bottom right. You have up to five consecutive undos, however, theoretically I increase this number to make it however many you want. I just figured five is enough for now. So let me just show you what it looks like by pressing undo. Now we see that cell seven has been removed and the spike has been placed back into its original place in cell four. Another thing to notice is this max plot spikes value of 2000 in this case, which is the default value. This value indicates that only 2000 spikes are plotted for every cell at a single time, not including the average waveform. Now if you're curious of which, how the spikes are chosen, or which 2000 spikes are chosen in this case, for every channel of every cell, I iterate through every x value and find the spikes that contain the minimum and maximum value for that specific x. This will make sure that we include all the outlying spikes. Given that Tint stores the waveforms in 50 sample chunks, this means that for each of the 50 samples, you'll have a minimum and maximum value. So that should be about 100 outlying spikes that are chosen, and the remaining values are just chosen randomly. Theoretically, you might think that 2000 is not enough, so you can change this value to whichever value you want. In this case, I'll just choose 50 as a visual, and the changes will take an effect after your next cut. So let's just make a cut here. Now you see there's only 50 spikes plotted for each of the cells. Let me just change it back to 2000, make a cut again, and we're back at 2000. Theoretically, it would be easier if I just made a refresh button so you didn't have to perform a cut to make the changes take effect. Let me know if you want something like that. This is easy enough, so I just kept it. Now, right now, we only have five spikes, so it's easy to visualize in this window. However, in the case that you have 30 spikes, it's going to be much more difficult, so I've added a pop-up window, so when the viewport gets crowded. For example, if we want to continue analyzing cell 4, you simply hold shift and you left-click on cell 4, and a pop-up window is created.
Now you can have multiple pop-ups by doing the same thing with, say, cell 3 in this example. If you want to have simultaneous pop-up windows. Now you notice that the, on the right hand side of this window is an enlarged version of what we saw in the main window. On the left just simply plots one of the channels, indicated by this drop down menu value. You can change which channel gets plotted by changing this value here. Simple enough. And cutting works in the exact same way as it did in the main window. You just simply click and drag, and then you choose which cell value you want to move the spikes, the invalid spikes to, and you select or you confirm your your invalid spikes with the middle mouse wheel button. You can also do the same on each of the channels here. And it's as easy as that. You have an undo button in this lower left hand corner. Make it easy for you if you want to undo a few times. Okay. And once you're done, you simply just press the save cut value. And since this cut file exists, it'll ask you if you want to overwrite it. Yes, in this case, cut file is saved successfully. And that is a brief tutorial of Jebuspike. Now, if we want to go back to the same session that we analyzed in Tint, we can do so by going to the choose our session. I put it on the desktop. Here's the session. We did Tetra 1, and we changed it to .clue.1. Press plot to visualize. Take some time to load the data. Now, if we maximize the screen to so get a better look, it was channel 17, so I'm going to enlarge it by pressing shift and left click. Okay, and it was our goal was to just remove these spikes, and we changed it to cell 25, so let's do that. Press middle mouse, removed 1.63% of the spikes, and we created cell 25 right here. Now, let's hide this. We'll save. It's already created. Let's press yes. Press yes to save. Save successfully. Okay. Now, if we go back to Tint, we can redo exact cut. Now, the these values here represent exactly what was done in Java Spike. We see that cell 25 has 64 spikes here, and also has 64 spikes here. 3874 in cell 17. 3874 in cell 17. So that is a brief example of how I go about it. I you, do, you can do some initial combining of cells in Tint and, and creating cells with your uh, two-dimensional feature space. And then when you're ready to cut the cells, I go into Jebuspike, perform my cuts, save them. Then you can go back to Tint and you can visualize the fields and, and everything that's essentially not in Tint. You can look at the histograms and, and whatever. So that is a brief tutorial on Jebuspike and how I use it. Feel free to check the description below. There's going to be a link to my website where I go over a, or I'll have a text-based tutorial. So I, I went over this as quick as I could. There might be some things that are missing. If you want to look at the methodology, feel free to check that as well. All right, thank you.